Hello and welcome to Enchantment of Eternities, the Expanse character analysis for Naomi Nagata. This video is a part of a series of videos where I analyze the character's journey from the Expanse. These videos will be focusing entirely on the Expanse TV show and not the Expanse novels. So I'll have to start with a spoiler warning for the Expanse up to the end of Season 4. If you haven't seen up to this point, you may not want to watch this video, otherwise some things may be spoiled for you. So, Naomi Nagata is a brilliant engineer with a troubled past. Naomi was raised on a small on small ships in the belt where survival was a huge issue. Eventually, uh, she fell in love with a man named Marco Inaros and had a son with him named Philip. Marco was involved with a violent faction of the OPA and recruited Naomi into that life as well. He had her set up a program that disabled UNN ships, which he insisted would only be used to disable the ships in order to make a statement, but instead he used the program she came up with to kill hundreds of people on those UN ships. Naomi was horrified that her work was used in such a manner and refused to work with Marco again, who insisted she help him kill more people. The result was that Marco took her son away from her and disappeared to where she would never see her son again. Later, Naomi would use her skills to become a chief engineer on the ice hauler, the Canterbury, a ship where most of its crew were said to be trying to escape their past, which described Naomi exactly as due to her past experiences, she wanted nothing to do with the OPA. She became friends with the second officer, James Holden, who noted that she seemed far too skilled as an engineer to just be working on an ice hauler. She also required a fierce loyalty from her mechanic Amos Burton, both of which were earthers, meaning Naomi would get along with anyone no matter where they were from despite her upbringing in the belt uh, that was uh, suppressed by the superpowers of Earth and Mars. After the Canterbury's destruction, she was stranded with the survivors of the Canterbury, which included Holden Amos and the Canterbury's Martian pilot, Alex Kamal. They had to fight for their survival on the shuttle Knight, which was severely damaged. Despite rank, Amos insisted Naomi should be in command as she was the most intelligent and Amos trusted her more. However, Naomi had her hands full trying to keep the shuttle from falling apart, so was happy to defer command to James Holden. However, she challenged him whenever he made command decisions he thought were unwise and tried to give him advice on how to be a better commander. When they were captured and imprisoned by the Martian warship, the Dollinger, Martian intelligence tried to blame her for the destruction of the Canterbury, insisted, insisting that she still worked with the OPA. However, she had to gain the trust of Holden and Amos so much uh, that they did not believe the Mar Martians. Uh, after the Dollinger was destroyed, the four survivors became the crew of the Rosnate, and Naomi was happy to take on the role as Chief Engineer and XO, leading James Holden to captain the ship. During their investigation of the Canterbury's destruction, they found they had to work with OPA leader Fred Johnson, which Naomi was very distrusting of due to her past experience with the OPA, and that led them to take precautions when dealing with Fred Johnson that paid off. However, Naomi would slowly go grow uh, to trust Johnson over time, and she grew closer to the crew of the Rosnate, particularly James Holden. Their investigation led them to Eros, which uh, she escaped before the entire station's population were killed in an experiment, proving to her some powers in the inner planets didn't care about Belter lives. After the incident, Detective Miller came on board the Rosnate, whom Naomi could relate to as he also understood what it was like to grow up in the belt. Later, when Holden kicked Miller off the ship for killing a man, for killing the man who perpetrated the Eros incident in cold blood, 
Naomi defended Miller, insisting that life wasn't as black and white as Holden saw it, and even though she wasn't prejudiced against all Earthers, she knew from her own experience that there were some powerful Earthers who didn't care about their lives and had no compunction of disposing of them as they saw fit if it benefit them. However, Naomi and Holden continued to grow closer to the point where they formed a romantic relationship. Although Naomi wasn't afraid to tell Holden when she thought he was wrong, she saw a really good man in him and someone she could trust. And Naomi was open-minded enough to look past the fact that he was an Arthur and uh, not... Uh, and not paint everyone from Earth with the same brush. However, when Holden spoke out at an OPA meeting when there was an internal struggle between Fred Johnson and Anderson Dawes, Naomi chastised him for this, pointing out that he was an outsider there and whenever he spoke they just heard an earther trying to tell them what to do. This wasn't her being prejudiced against earthers, but it was her acknowledging the prejudice that exists against earthers in the belt and warning Holden of it. When the Rosnate crew discovered a sample of the powerful protomolecule that had destroyed the Aero Station, the crew voted to destroy the sample by driving it into the sun. However, Naomi, by herself, decided to defy their wishes and keep the sample hidden in case they needed it again. Eventually, their investigation of the protomolecule led them to Ganymede Station, uh, which was in chaos and slowly being destroyed. Holden became obsessed with destroying all traces of the protomolecule at all cost, which distanced him from her. She and Amos ended up splitting up from him, and she was more concerned with saving as many people from Ganymede as possible. When it was discovered there was limited space on the ship to evacuate people, Amos and the captain of the ship wanted to leave everyone behind as they began to riot, but Naomi insisted that they not leave behind those they can save, and she risked her own life to save them. In fact, she was willing to stay behind and die on Ganymede, but those there insisted that she return. However, after the ship lifted off, its destruction was threatened as Ganymede had become a war zone, and had it not been for Holden arriving at the last minute to save her, she would have died. However, when she thought she was going to die, she sent a transmission to Fred Johnson telling him where to find the sample of the protomolecule that she had hidden. When she returned to the Rosnate, she was once again endeared to James Holden, who apologized for his behavior and realized he shouldn't have lost sight of what was important. And when Holden's life was put in peril by the, a protomolecule hybrid that had stowed away on board, Naomi realized how much she loves Holden, so she confessed to him that she had given Fred Johnson the protomolecule, uh, which was against the crew's wishes. This not only put a strain on her relationship with Holden, but it estranged her from the rest of the Rosnate crew who felt they could no longer trust her. It got to the point where it became obvious no one wanted her on board, so she suggested they return to Tycho Station where she would leave the ship and they would never have to see her again. However, instead, Holden uh, took the ship to, uh, on a quest to Io, where uh, the crew ended up getting involved in the Earth-Mars conflict, trying to put an end to the war by exposing a conspiracy to use protomolecule hybrids against Mars. Naomi even went on board a doomed UNN ship, which was infested with the protomolecule, with Alex Kamal in an attempt to prevent the attack on Mars from happening. When they were unsuccessful, Naomi came up with a plan to give Fred Johnson the transponder codes of the hybrid missiles so that he could destroy them before they reached Mars. However, this time she ran it by Holden, Amos, and Alex, and she said uh, she would only do it if they all agreed. They did agree, so she gave the codes to Johnson, who was able to destroy the missiles before they reached Mars. Naomi redeemed herself in the eyes of her crew and she and Holden reconciled. However, Naomi still decided that it was time for her to leave the Rosinate and rejoin the OPA. 
Months later, Naomi found herself as the chief engineer on board the OPA's first warship, the Behemoth, which was just a retrofitted uh, ship from a colony ship, the Nauvoo. She was close friends with the ship's captain, uh, Camino Drummer, uh, and she would defend Drummer when they were forced to take on a first officer on the behemoth loyal to Anderson Dolls, a man named Klaus Ashford. They were on a mission to explore the ring, a strange protomolecule creation in the outer edges of the solar system. There, the behemoth was just one of many ships exploring the ring, including UNN and MCRN fleets and the Resonate. When the Resonate was framed by Clarissa Mal for destroying a UN ship, and a, the fake recording insisted that he did it in the name of the OPA, Ashford insisted that they destroy the Resonate in order to prove to the UNN they did not condone this action. Naomi was outraged by this. Uh, despite that, Drummer sided with Ashford and ordered its destruction, and Naomi protested so hard she had to be physically removed, restrained, and gagged. Thankfully, the Rosinate evaded destruction by going into the ring, but Naomi had lost all hope and confidence in the OPA at that moment. When Ashford was trying to convince her to remain loyal to the OPA, he gave her a speech about how one can't let nostalgia dictate one's actions as the past is gone and will never return. Ironically, though, this speech ended up having the opposite effect on Naomi than what was intended, as Naomi took it to mean her leaving the Rosinate to rejoin the OPA was nostalgia and her true place was on the Rosinate, who were her true family. So Naomi went to take a skiff to return to the Rosinate. Drummer caught her in the act, however, because they were such close friends, Drummer let her leave. A crisis then arose in the slow zone that killed many people and left Alex and Amos on the Rosinate severely injured, to which Naomi returned to help them recover and to repair the Rosinate. She then had to survive an attack by Clarissa Mal, who was bent on destroying James Holden. After she was successful, she and the Rosinante crew returned to the behemoth where Holden was being held. She then reconciled with Holden once again, and she helped him and Drummer to stop Ashford from attacking the ring which would have resulted in the death of all humanity. She once again put her life on the line with Holden, and they barely managed to stop Ashford and managed to power down the behemoth, which resulted in opening the ring gates, which led to hundreds of inhabited worlds, or inhabitable worlds. And Naomi once again returned to her true home, her true family, as Exo of the Rosinate. Over a year later, Naomi joined the Rosinante in a mission beyond the ring gates to one of the habitable worlds named Illus that had been colonized by refugees from the belt. The colony was being threatened by an Earth Corporation Royal, Royal Charter Energy, which was staking a legal claim to the planet. Holden was sent by Avasarella to investigate the strange protomolecule technology on the planet. Naomi insisted on being there with Holden and helping him on his mission, even though no, being a belter, her physiology wasn't accustomed to being down at planet's gravity well. So she had to endure rigorous training in order to go to the planet, uh, which she did, and she and Holden became even closer during their time on Illus. However, their name he, uh, befriended the colony's doctor, Lucia, whom uh, she felt a kinship to. So when RCE security chief uh, Murtry wanted to kill her as he blamed her for being involved in the destruction of one of his shuttles, Naomi rushed uh, to help her escape Murtry, even putting her own life on the line. Holden and the Rosinate crew were more than willing to help Naomi as they were a family now, but Naomi put herself directly in the line of fire in order to save Lucia. Uh, Holden and the others did come through for her, and they managed to get Lucia safely on board the Rosinate. 
Nami was then forced to leave Illus on the Rosinate with Alex, as her physiology wasn't adapting well to being down a gravity well. So there, Lucia confessed to having been involved in the destruction of the heavy shuttle in which 23 people lost their lives. Lucia was succumbing to the guilt of it, but Naomi convinced her that she was still a good person and still could be saved, and she could relate to her on a personal level after what she experienced earlier in her life with Marco and ours. She was convinced more than ever that Lucia could be redeemed, as Naomi was able to redeem herself and do good with her life after being involved with the death of so many. Naomi helped Lucia to reconcile with her estranged daughter and together they helped save the Rosnate in the Belter ship when a crisis had a ridden, has arisen. After which Holden returned to the ship and Naomi expressed to him how tragic she found it that Lucia wouldn't get the same chance of redemption that she got, but Holden then surprised Naomi by revealing that he will let Lucia return to Illus to resume her life with her family rather than turning her in, which really endears him even more to her, uh, as it reinforces that Holden is a good man that she can trust. However, on their way back to Soul System, uh, Naomi learns that Marco Inaris is making a name for himself uh, through destructive acts of terror and that he is a wanted man and moreover that, her, that their son, Philip, is apparently involved with him. Naomi then reaches out to Fred Johnson for help to find her son, Philip. So Naomi Nagata is a brilliant engineer and someone with a strong moral code, which is probably why she was so attracted to a man like James Holden, who also has a very strong sense of morality. However, Naomi is more grounded than Holden and often serves as a good anchor for him to occasionally give him a much needed reality check. But Naomi is also a woman divided between two worlds. Devotion to her new family on the Rosinate where she finally feels she belongs but also loyalty to where she's from, the belt. As she still cares very much for the belt and understands their plight. Over the course of the show she seems to have struck a good balance between uh, the two uh, the two different signs drew trials and tribulations. However, it appears this will be put to the test once again as her desire to, to find her long estranged son is pulling to the forefront yet again. So that's it for my character analysis for Naomi Nakata. I'll be back each month for another analysis for a different character from The Expanse. In the meantime, you can check out my channel for more videos on The Expanse as well as many other videos and other shows like Star Trek and more. So be sure to subscribe so you can keep up with all of that. And thanks a lot for watching.